Hello, my name is Hemingway Jones and welcome to the channel. This is a place where we talk about fountain pens, about inks, writing, journaling, all that sort of thing. We're here in my library, which is a perfect place to do it. And what I thought we'd speak about today is organizing my fountain pens. So without much ado, let's get right into it. So as I'm filming this, it's after the holidays. I've picked up a few new pens. It's time to work them into the collection. And that means reorganizing my pens. And one of the biggest challenges, I think, if you end up with a pen collection is finding a proper storage solution. Personally, I don't think anything is ideal, but there are certain compromises. And what I have are the Jorlojo binder storage system with the um, elastic straps that hold them in place. It works pretty well. What I like about it is I'm able to shelve them and have it very nice and neat and actually behind me on my shelves so they're within reach wherever I'm at my desk doing work, which is most of the time. So it's nice to have them handy, but occasionally you have to reorganize them. And since I have these new pens to work in, I figured I'd share the process with you. What do you think? Let's get going. So these are what I use to store my pens. These are the Girolojo binders, I call them. They're made out of leather. One is burgundy-ish, and the other is pretty much flat brown. These are so difficult to find nowadays. I was just happy to come across these, that they match. And I uh, wish they were in the same color, but at least I have two. These do a very nice job when they're shelved. They keep them nice and organized. They don't take up a lot of space and they're fairly light and they hold quite a few pens. So each of these hold 24 pens. So I'm holding 48 pens here right now. I also have a smaller one that holds 12 pens that can handle any overflow. Now, some of my pens I don't store this way. I got this great Heiko pen from East Germany. It's going to stay in its original box I just love this pen and I love to keep it all in its original state. I also have this vintage Parker pen. It's dead stock. It's never been filled. I'm going to keep this in its original case. I believe it's a 21. It's a pretty great pen. I am super curious of how this writes. So I'm going to maybe one day fill it. We'll see. I also have this really nice case that came from Blue Dew Pens. And I keep the really small ones in here, my Kaveco Lilliput and my Watchman 52 and a half, since they don't fit in any of the Girolojo binders. And I don't want them to get away when I'm not using them. So I hold each of them in here. So I just put this paper down, something to give a little contrast. This, by the way, is the Mont Blanc Egyptomania, one of my new pens and one of the reasons why I have to reorganize everything. So I'm gonna start by putting this down. Now, I think I'm gonna keep all the Mont Blanc pens all together, and I'll probably start off with them. I kind of hate almost to have the sort of big name be first, but these two pens I keep reaching for more than any others. I mean, this is my all-time favorite, the Mont Blanc Meisterstück 149. So that definitely needs to be at the top. And I just feel funny separating the brands, uh, sort of dividing up the family. We got to keep the uh, clans and the families together, I think. So this is how I've decided to organize them. So let's put the Meisterstück over with the Egyptomania. Then we have a 264 and a 22 and I think a 152. So we'll put all these really great vintage Mont Blanc pens. Gosh, I love these. You know, the one problem is you pull these out and you realize like, oh, I haven't inked that up in a couple weeks. Maybe I need to uh, get some ink there. Now, I think since we're going to keep the heavy hitters together, I think it'd be a good idea maybe to put the Cartier Diabolo. This is actually red. I don't know how red this is coming up right now, but this is in Chinese lacquer red with a ruby cabochon and a beautiful gold trim. This is an incredible pen. Um, very large too, when you see that together. 
I'm thinking if we're going to go kind of in a hierarchy, but certainly not a tight hierarchy, I'm thinking this gorgeous Pelican M600 Sovereign in Red Tortoise. That's a good one to put next. Do you believe I only have one Pelican pen? I had a Blue Ocean. I don't have it anymore. I gave it away to my attorney. I missed that pen. Here's a La Grande Bellezza by uh, um, Pinator. Another incredible pen. I like these two reds being side by side, so we'll keep them. Now, here's a bit of kind of um, where I'm wondering if I'm doing the right thing, okay? So here we have the Sailor 1911. So I'm gonna keep it, I guess, away from the Mont Blanc because they look kind of similar, don't they? I mean, for a while, all my pens were black and gold, which um, got a little old. They sort of look all the same. I mean, even this gorgeous Pilot Custom 823 with no ink. Can you believe I don't have ink in this right now? I need to remedy that. But also sort of looks very Mont Blanc, very classic. I mean, you can see it's amber, but um, it also registers as pretty dark, especially once you have ink in there. Just straighten these guys up. It's bothering my sense of order. Next, I'm thinking Estherbrook Estes. These guys, I have two of them. They're pretty amazing. We'll put them side by side. We have to keep them together. They're like brothers. So now I'm thinking Waterman. This is a Kareen in amber. An absolutely gorgeous, amazing pen. I think I'll put that next. And then with the Waterman, Kareen is always its best buddy, the Charleston. Do you guys have a Charleston? It's a, such a fantastic pen. I see these online used for about a hundred bucks. They have gold nibs. I forget if it's 18 karat. I think it's 18 karat, but an amazing nib. This has a fine. It is so smooth. This top-notch pen, highly recommend it. Go get yourself one. Now this is where it gets a little bit like confusing because I still have some pens like um, Cross and Schaefer to get to, but I'm gonna have to throw the Watermans all together. And these are Phileas's. Do you remember the Phileas? The Phileas was like the Twisby of its day. It was like the affordable pen that just punched way above its weight. Still a great pen, still super fun to use. So I feel very fortunate that I have two. I actually have three. I have one that's a rollerball, but that's a way. I have some away too, so. So next, we're gonna put the cross, cross pen next. I guess it's here technically. I don't know why I went this way, because I, I have more. I'll probably put them over there. But do you believe I only have one cross? I mean, here in New England, cross pens are a tradition. You give them out when people graduate or they're really good gifts, birthday gifts and whatnot, but I only have one, but here it is. It's a great pen. And I only have one Schaefer, which I really don't ink up much anymore, but I really should. So I'm hoping to actually do a review of this in the future. Fantastic pen. Okay, next I'm going with Conklin. Both orange. This is a door graph. Look how beautiful this is. It's a lot of pen for 30, 40 bucks, whatever it is. Really nice writer. And this is an all American. Pretty great too. This has a stub nib. Let's create another section, shall we? Just kind of put them up here, side by side. Keep them watch. So now let's talk about Twisby pens. This is a Twisby VAC 700R in Iris. Just one of the best pens out there. I love vac filled pens and I love Twisby and I love this one especially. Look at that rainbow nib. And this pen is also very, very special because it's a cursive smooth italic. It was a custom grind done by the Nibsmith at Pen Realm and they did a fantastic job. It's smooth, it's fun to write with. It makes your writing look so amazing. I'm gonna do a review of this very soon. Now, some of you that know the channel know that my wife has one of these and hers is in cursive italic and it's another great pen. I loved it so much that I had to get one for myself. So that starts off Twisby, right? It's one of the reasons why we're doing this. Now, here's another one, rose gold. Look at this thing, it's awesome. This has a stub nib. This is one of my favorite journaling pens. I use this all the time. Amazing, it's only $30. 
awesome, awesome pen. Let's put that right next to it. Now I have another Twisby Eco. This one is in a fine nib that I use for taking notes and everything else, a great workhorse pen. And lastly, the Diamond 580, an awesome pen. This got me started with Twisby. This pen was a gift and it sort of clued me in on just how great these pens are. We'll put that right there. Okay, so we're gonna have to tighten these guys up because we have a lot more pens to get through. I just realized. There we go. Make some room here. So next, we're gonna go with the Y Studio Classic Revolve. I love this pen. I just did a review on this recently. Perhaps you've seen it. If not, please seek it out. Now next, the classic Lamy Safari with a calligraphy nib. One of my favorites. I did a lot of content on this one. Now next, the Blue Dew Flex Pen. The best flex pen I've used yet. I'm sure I'll do more on that soon. Now, because of quality, I have to put this with it. This is the Pilot Falcon, but I'm really not that enamored with that pen. It's a big disappointment. I've never been that happy with this pen. Look at this, I left the sticker on. I wonder if that's worth anything now. I have two Fountain Pen Revolution Himalayas, both with flex nibs. Great pens. I was super happy with them until I discovered the Blue Dew. I'm still happy with them, but I just think the Blue Dew is better. But I mean, you know, this is like $70 pen. The Pilot Falcon's like $200, and all three of these blow that away. Jinhao 450. It's basically sort of a trump loy. It looks real nice, but it's just stuck on there. It's not, it writes well, but not a very nice pen. Pilot Metropolitan. Classic. I don't use that much. I probably should. Okay, I'm going to have to tidy these guys up a bit. Still have more pens to get to. Now I have the family of Kaveco pens with this great classic red. I love this pen. It's so elegant. I'm going to do some content on this soon. I'm really into Kaveco. I think they're so fun. Here's a Supra. I could only find a um, gold clip for it. But I'd um, love to find a stainless steel that matches it. Pretty much slides off anyway, but still a very cool pen that writes amazingly. And now I have my two brass sports. One in medium and one with a calligraphy nib, which is incredible. Get the Kaveco calligraphy nib. Fantastic. So Kaveco sports in frosted. Real nice. Love the pink, you guys. Totally into the pink. It's beautiful. Here's some more pens. There's one in olive. It's very nice. Kaveco sent me that to do content over on TikTok. And then they also sent me this gorgeous one, which I really love the cyan. Really love it. And um, also for doing content on TikTok. Not for here, over there. So they don't even know about my YouTube. Okay, now we're into the vintage pens. This happens to be Queen Elizabeth II's favorite pen. Do you know what it is? It's a Parker 51. Great pen. That is one from around, I don't know, 1959, I'm guessing. Conway Stewart and his gorgeous burgundy. I should use this more, right? Beautiful pen. Look at that bad boy. Love that so much. And um, here's another. Here's a Parker Duofold. I guess I should put that with, with the Parker. What do you think? I'm thinking, yes. Ooh, and another Parker. Vacuumatic. You have to have a Vacuumatic. Everyone has one, right? Looks like my clip is a little out of sorts, but this thing writes great. Beautiful pen. And old school Estabrooks. See, I don't feel right about putting it with the newer Estabrooks. They just seem like different things. I mean, technically they're a different company. Even though I love those, um, I have a lot of affection for these. Super fun. J series right there. And last for these, this is the Wall Oxford. Just a gorgeous pen. Nice soft nib. Some nice line variation. Reminds me a bit of the Conway Stewart. I always am a sucker for pens like this. 
When I see these on Peyton Street pens, I end up having to buy them. I'm sure I'm eventually going to have a huge collection of vintage pens. So I do have a few more. I mentioned I have some away. I have some that um, are in boxes I didn't like that much that I'm probably going to sell. But this is pretty much the fleet as it stands. So let's get all of these back into cases. And here's the case, the Girologio. They slide in like this. The problem is if they don't have clips, there's no bottom. It'd be nice if there was just a little bit of fabric sewn on here or something that raised it so they wouldn't slide out. Okay, now we have another one to fill up. You might notice these pieces of duct tape. That's what I use to keep the ones without clips from just sliding all over the place. I just put it at the bottom. It works okay. So let's get these put away. And so through the wonder of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, that looked a lot quicker than it actually was. Now let me mention one thing. Be very careful with your lever filled pens. It's so easy to get them caught on the elastics and you could break off the lever. And you know how delicate vintage pens can be. So be careful there. So now put this here, fold it up. We're going to put it back on the shelf. Okay guys, so here they are on the shelf, right where I keep them, just below all of my journals. So now everything's organized or in their proper places. It makes me feel good. It was bothering me that I didn't know where I was going to put them all. And if I decide to do something different, it's easy enough to just switch them around. But thanks for joining me in this process. It was a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a like, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about how I've organized my pens. Does it make sense? Is there something better I should have done? Something I missed? something you do different. I'd really like to hear. I'd love to have a uh, conversation with you in the comments. Also, if you could share this with someone that you think might enjoy it, I'd appreciate that too. I'm trying to grow the channel so anybody else that you could let them know that I'm out here, I'd appreciate it. So please subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thank you.